In this video, we will learn about IV catheterization or intravenous catheterization. IV catheterization is a technique in which cannula is placed into the vein to provide venous access. Venous access allows sampling of blood as well as administration of fluids, medications, parenteral nutrition, chemotherapy, and blood products. Choosing the correct catheter size is very important to obtain the effective results from the therapy. The choice may depend upon several factors, patient's condition, patient's age, diagnosis, condition of the vasculature, patient's preferred site for vascular access device insertion, and type and duration of infusion therapy. Now you know the basics, so let's just understand the procedure of IV insertion. Before insertion, please ensure that you do have physician's orders for IV insertion. Afterwards, wash your hands and gather all your supplies and explain the procedure to the client. Please answer or address any queries your patient may have. Before you begin insertion, make sure your patient is comfortably seated. After putting the gloves on, now you can start identifying the site. Most preferable sites for IV catheter insertion includes dorsal arch for metacarpal veins, cephalic veins, or basilic veins. The nurse should avoid the areas of flexion, for example, avoiding the areas of inner aspect of wrist, to avoid the risk of damage to the radial, ulnar or median nerves. Also avoid the veins of the lower extremities due to the increased risk of embolism, thrombophlebitis and infection. For demonstration, let's just tie the tourniquet to the arm and then assess the veins and see which insertion site looks the best. Now you have found your site, we want to release the tourniquet because you do not want to obstruct the blood flow for a longer period of time. Once you are ready, reapply the tourniquet and cleanse the site using alcohol swab or chlorohexidine swab. Now remove the cannula from its packaging and remove the needle cover ensuring not to touch the needle. Stretch the skin distally and inform the patient that they should expect a sharp scratch. Insert the needle bevel up at about 30 degrees. Advance the needle until a flashback of blood is seen in the hub at the back of the cannula. Once the flashback of blood is seen, progress the entire cannula further then fix the needle advancing the rest of the cannula into the vein. Release the tourniquet and apply pressure to the vein at the tip of the cannula and remove the needle carefully. Remove the cap from the needle and put this on the end of the cannula. Now carefully dispose of needle into sharps bin and apply the dressing to the cannula to fix it in place and ensure that the date sticker has been completed and applied. You can also follow your agency policy and attach saline lock to your IV cannula. But make sure your saline lock is already primed with normal saline and ready to go. Once your cannula with the saline lock is in place, fill the syringe with the saline or use the pre-filled syringes with saline to flush that cannula to check the potency. If there is any resistance or if it causes any pain, then you need to see if there is any localized tissue swelling. If yes, then immediately stop flushing and remove the cannula and start again. Dispose of your gloves and equipment in the clinical waste bin. Ensure the patient is comfortable after performing hand hygiene document your procedure, also do the follow-up check to ensure that your patient is doing okay. We hope you enjoyed learning this procedure and follow us and stay tuned for more clinical videos. Hello nurses and nursing students, how are you guys? I hope you guys enjoyed learning about IV insertion. Now let's just practice some NCLEX style questions associated with that skill. Here is the first question on your screen. The nurse is working in day surgery and preparing to insert an IV line for a client. Which action is the priority during the insertion process? Here are your four options. Pause and think for yourself what the answer is before I move on. All right, guys, let's just review option number A. Select a site proximal to a joint for ease of movement. What do you guys think about it? That is incorrect. Selecting a site proximal to a joint may compromise the stability. 
and increase the risk of infiltration. So that's why A is incorrect. B, elevating the limb to dilate the vein. What do you guys think? That is also incorrect because the action would not actually dilate the vein and is not a part of insertion process. Let's just look at option number C, palpating the selected site for the presence of veins. What do you guys think? That is correct because this action is a priority during the insertion process. Option number D, applying a tourniquet tightly above the insertion site. Pay attention. Do you guys think this is correct? No, that's incorrect. Applying a tourniquet tightly above the insertion site can impede the blood flow and increase the discomfort for the client. I hope you guys enjoyed this question. Now let's just move on to the next question. Here is the next question on your screen. A nurse is preparing to insert an intravenous for a client who is known to have difficult venous access. What is the best action the nurse can take? So here are your four options and I want you to think about it, take a pause and then we will discuss. Okay. All right guys, let's just discuss option number A. Choose one size larger gauge catheter to increase success. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. The action may actually increase the risk of complications such as infiltration, phlebitis, for example. Let's just look at option number B. Warm the extremity to dilate the blood vessel. Option B is correct. This action causes vasodilation and is a recommended action to do prior to starting an IV to increase your chances of seeing the vein. So that is correct. Let's just look at option number C. Insert the IV catheter at a 20 degree angle to the skin. What did you guys learn in the video? That is incorrect. Inserting a catheter at 20 degree angle is not recommended. This action is most likely end up perforating through the vein and it should be inserted at a lower angle. Let's just look at option number D. Elevate the extremity to increase the venous pressure. What do you guys think? That is actually incorrect. This action causes decreased venous pressure and as a result, the decreased nurse's chances of success in inserting the IV. I hope you guys are still enjoying questions. Let's just do one more question here. The nurse is inserting an IV catheter and encounters the resistance while attempting to thread the catheter in the vein. What is the most appropriate action? Here are your four choices. Pause and think what's the answer before I discuss. All right, guys, let's just look at option number A. Apply more force when advancing the catheter and pay attention to these kind of words in your exam when you're writing NCLEX. Do you think the nurse would do that? No, that's incorrect. This is not a recommended action and actually could lead to trauma to the client's vein and cause infiltration. Option number B, rotate the catheter slightly and attempt to thread again. What do you guys think? That is also incorrect because rotation of the catheter may not address the issue of resistance effectively. Option number C, withdraw the catheter slightly and redirect it to navigate the vein. What do you guys think? That seems like a best action here and that's a correct one because when you encounter resistance, while starting IV, it's good to withdraw the catheter slightly and redirect it to navigate through the vein. Let's just look at the last option D. Remove the catheter and choose a larger IV gauge size. What do you guys think? I don't think so. That's a correct option. That's incorrect because this action should only be considered if the size of the catheter is appropriate for the client's vein and if redirection is unsuccessful. Okay, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the previous scenario. Now let's just look at the new statement and the new question. Here it is. What action by the nurse is considered essential when preparing to insert an IV line in a pediatric client? Look at these four options, take a pause and choose for yourself which one is the answer before I discuss. Let's just look at option number A. Use a large tourniquet for better vein visibility. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. This action is not necessary and may cause unnecessary discomfort. Option number B, allow the client to choose the insertion site. What do you guys think? This seems a little tempting here, that, but this is incorrect. Allowing the child to choose the insertion site is not practical and the nurse must assess where it is most appropriate to start an IV line. Option number C, 
securing the catheter tightly to minimize the movement. What do you guys think? That's incorrect because this action can compromise the circulation and increase the risk of complications. And now you guys know probably D is an answer, but let's just look at it. Choose a smaller gauge catheter for delicate veins. And yes, that is the correct option because choosing an appropriate catheter size is the best thing the nurse can do. I hope you guys enjoyed this question. Now let's just move on to the next scenario. Here is the question on your screen. A client on an oncology unit requires a blood transfusion. Which action should the nurse prioritize when selecting an IV catheter size for this client? Here are your four options. Pause and think for yourself which one is the answer before I discuss. All right, let's just look at option number A. Choose a 16 gauge IV catheter for rapid blood flow. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. The choice of catheter allows for a rapid flow of fluids, but it may cause more discomfort to the client and is not always necessary for administering blood or blood transfusion products. The priority when choosing an IV catheter size is selecting an appropriate size as per the client needs. Look at the option number B. Choose a 22 gauge IV catheter to minimize client discomfort. What do you guys think? That seems incorrect because 22 gauge catheter may be too small for the blood transfusion, leading to slower rates or potential complications. Let's just look at the option number C. Choose a 20 gauge IV catheter to accommodate the prescribed blood transfusion. And yes, that is the correct option because a 20 gauge catheter is commonly recommended size for blood transfusion as it provides an adequate blood flow without causing excessive discomfort to the client. I know you guys know D is not an option, but let's just still review it. Choose an 18 gauge IV catheter for better visibility of the vein. What do you guys think? That is incorrect because that size may be a little bit larger what it is needed for. And the goal is to select a catheter size that balances the visibility with the patient's comfort and the fluid flow. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill as well as NCLEX style question practice. That's what we do at FPNPC. We are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.